Hello and welcome. Today we have a bit of shallow diving. Isn't shallow diving an extreme sport? Hold on, let's ask the all-knowing Google. Shallow diving is an extreme sport whereby enthusiasts attempt to dive from the greatest height into the shallowest depth of water without sustaining injury. Well, we will definitely not be doing that today here on this channel or ever. What I meant to say is we will uncover Hoya Multiflora a bit, but there wasn't that much to find, no controversies, no botanists dying. It was quite uneventful. However, I will show you my Hoya Multiflora in bloom and another clone of Hoya Multiflora that I have. We will discuss the different clones a little bit and we will talk a bit about the care as well. Hoya multiflora is an epiphytic shrub. It was published by Carl Ludwig de Blume or Carl Ludwig von Blume, depending where you look, and sometimes Carolus Ludovicus Blume, and in Dutch it's Karel Ludovic Blume. It's, I'm, I'm clearly no Dutch-speaking person, which is just Dutch. And it was published in one of his eight catalogs in 1823. If you remember my video on Hoya macrophylla and Hoya latifolia, you will also remember that it was Carl Ludwig de Blume who published Hoya macrophylla originally, the true Hoya macrophylla, the one that we still don't know what it is, or at least I still don't know what it is, and I think most of the people still don't know what this Hoya looks like. Hoya that you have in your home, if you have a Hoya under the name macrophylla, is Hoya latifolia, as I discussed in that video. I think a lot of people still don't understand this and maybe an updated version of that video is necessary but also I was kind of saving that when this whole mystery of Hoya macrophylla gets solved and there are people working on it the Hoya version of Sherlock Holmes which is Michele Roda <laughs> it's quite an honor to be the Hoya version of Sherlock Holmes in my opinion at least where was I? I honestly do not know where I was going with that. I think what I wanted to say is that it is more likely that I will do a profile video on Carl Ludwig de Blume. And if you would like something like that, do leave a comment down below and while you're at it, subscribe. Why am I doing the eyebrow dance? And the head dance, am I like that puppy, dog or whatever in the car that just does the, I'm gonna get sick, aren't I? You all left, didn't you? Ugh talking to myself again. In all seriousness, if you want that video, do leave a comment down below. And now let's continue. We will just wait for a moment for my brain to remember what the original topic was. The plant itself was collected much sooner than 1823. When I was looking through Q's database, I found some herbarium specimens that date back to 1802. And it's quite possible that it was known to botanists even before that, but maybe it was not recorded. Hoya multiflora has a wide native range from Guangxi and Yunnan in southeast to south central China, Cambodia, Laos, Java, Vietnam, Thailand, Assam in India, Bangladesh, and probably some other countries that I'm forgetting. Malaysia, Myanmar, did I say Myanmar? I feel like I did. Oh, I got most of them. I think I didn't get New Guinea, Sulawesi, and Sumatra. Good enough. The clone that I have is Hoya Multiflora SV406, and you are wondering, probably, Miro, when are you going to show us the plant? Hold on, it takes time to arrive to places in this place, household, channel. <laughs> this is my Hoya Multiflora, and you can see it is not a big plant, but it is certainly overexposed. This plant came to me as a cutting in May of this year. It was unrooted cutting, and I do think I shared a video with you about that. It grew quite a lot since then. It had three or four leaves, and most of those are lost. I think I only have two of the original leaves. There may have been actually four or six. I not sure I don't remember very well right now, but most of the original ones were lost because it was my first time rooting this Hoya or this type of Hoya and it was not easy. I had a much better luck rooting another clone from Camilla and that is the variegated Hoya multiflora, which is this one, and 
so far it is doing really well. It is growing much faster and it is also overexposed. You can see how the leaves look. They are very nice. They have a bit of creamish white color on the margin. So it is the outer variegated version. And if you compare these two, you can see that my uh, dirt is falling out. Yes, continue to fall out, no problem. I did not vacuum. You will see that SV406 has darker leaves, obviously non-variegated ones. They are more narrow. Uh, and the variegated Hoya Multiflora has wider leaves. They seem to me much bigger. They are paler green. And I do believe when I touch them, they feel less stiff. They're not as stiff like SV406. I have a lot of perlite on my desk. Did I get some in my coffee? Best to test it. No perlite detected. That's good. That is good. We do not want to drink perlite. Somehow I do have the urge to suck the perlite with my mouth from this desk. Uh, the story of how I died. That's this video. SV406 is an accession number. It is the collection number and it relates to this particular clone of Hoya Multiflora. SV stands for Steinosa Varberi. My Swedish is just becoming. <laughs> in fact, it stands for Steinosa in Varberi. Steinosa, to my understanding, was a garden center that was run by Arne and Margit Kastberghi in Sweden. Arne and Margit collected both orchids and Hoyas. They initially started to collect orchids in the 80s and they went to places like Guatemala and Amazon, but they also went to Papua New Guinea and Borneo and later on Madagascar. So when you see SV in the name of your plant, as a part of the accession number, it means that your plant came from a cutting from a plant that they collected. And it can only be, of course, propagated by cuttings. Arne also has a Hoya that was named after him by Dale Kloppenberg, and it is Hoya Kostbergi. Now, this it becomes a bit tricky with pronunciation here. When a Hoya, or not a Hoya, but to my understanding, when a plant is named after a person, like when it has their last name, you're supposed to attempt to preserve the pronunciation of their last name in their original language. And in Swedish, it is not Kastberg, so we cannot call it Kastbergi. It is Kast... Kastberg. Oh, sh I forgot. <laughs> Hold on, I need to listen how it's pronounced. Margit Kasberi. So it is Kasberi. Do I then say Hoya Kasberi? It, it becomes quite tricky. Come on, Swedes, jump into the comment section or like send a voice memo on Instagram. How do we pronounce it? Hoya Kasberi? I'm not just gonna, I'm gonna call it Hoya Kasbergi. The point is, I do not have this Hoya yet. That was the whole point. You have to take quite a long journey on this channel to get to my point. As I mentioned, I do have this other clone of Hoya Multiflora, and it is the outer variegated one. And unfortunately, I planted it a bit too deep. You can see that there is quite a space here, and it tried to produce a peduncle, and it kept pushing on the rim of this plastic cup. So unfortunately, the buds didn't really develop, and that is fine. I can see that it is producing a new peduncle right here, and I think it's also time to repot it. It is well rooted now, and this also doesn't have a drainage hole. We will get to that a bit later in the video. There are several other clones of Hoya Multiflora, and some of them did change their name a bit. There was a Hoya, or there still is a Hoya that used to be called Hoya Lee. L-I-I, not L-Y-I that we talked about. Hoya L-Y-I is this one, and it does look quite similar, I admit. This is Hoya Lee with Y, and it is about to bloom soon if you want to see how this Hoya blooms. There is a video on it and I need to water it as the rest of them, but that's not the topic of this video either, isn't it? 
that Hoya was reclassified as Hoya multiflora and also Hoya that had the name Hoya javanica, that one was also reclassified as Hoya multiflora. There is a clone of Hoya multiflora that has inner variegation and to my understanding this one is quite uncommon and quite pricey. Hoya multiflora usually goes for 20 euros, this one is far more expensive than that, 10 or 15 times more expensive, and that's fine. It, it, it's a lovely looking plant. It seems that with that one, variegation will appear on the newer growth, but eventually it will fade away to darker green. I have read that it is still visible, but not as prominent as it is on the newer growth. There is also some difference among the clones when it comes to the color of the flower. The Corolla can vary from being white to having a bit of yellowish on the edges or to having a bit of the orange color. And yes, that this is really orange when you see it in person. It does look yellow on camera, but I will try to capture it to the best of my ability with photos and it is orangey, definitely. According to Hoya cards that are made by Potomac, the smell can also vary between the clones. You have clones that have slightly stronger smell and the ones that don't. And slightly stronger smell is still weak, <laughs> it's not very strong, but there are the ones that just don't really smell as much. Hoya SV406, aside from it being with a lovely color on the Corolla of the flower, is also a clone that has slightly stronger scent. I did smell it the first day when it opened and I could detect a smell, but unfortunately I can no longer smell anything which sounds like I have COVID, I don't. What I have is a Hoya Metrata in bloom and <laughs> let me tell you something, first time that it bloomed, it did not smell that much. The second time, wowza. <laughs> the entire room at night will smell of Hoya Metrata. Quite, quite strong and you know, there are more flowers this time around, but I absolutely cannot detect the smell in this Hoya at night. It, it just, it's overpowered by Hoya Mitrata and even if I move it to a different part of the room, I still cannot smell it because it's that weak compared to Hoya Mitrata. By the way, if you do want to get Hoya cards, I will leave a link down in the description below. To my knowledge, they are currently not being printed. There are some difficulties due to the pandemic, uh, but I think in January they will be printed again. So get in line if you want them. I have to say when I first started to collect Hoyas, Hoya Multiflora was not on the top of my list. Honestly, it was not even on the bottom of my list. It was completely off of my list. And I do think this is true for most people who start to collect Hoyas. You know, it starts very innocent. You have a Hoya and it's usually a Carnosa and you somehow obtained this Hoya, you don't really remember how. And you know, you start to think maybe there are some others and then you discover Hoya Finlaysoni or Hoya Callistophila and then you're a bit floored and you want a little bit more of that. You want more Hoyas with prominent veining and then you discover your Hoyas with big leaves, with small leaves, with splashy leaves and then you start to get those Hoyas and then they start to bloom little by little. You thought they would never bloom but they do start to bloom and then all hell breaks loose. You start to appreciate specimens that you used to find boring like Hoya multiflora and you even start to like the foliage. Believe me, this will happen to each and every one of you if you are looking into getting more and more Hoyas. They are bewitching. The point of that detour was to say I thought I would never own Hoya multiflora, I thought it was ugly and now I have two of them and to be quite honest with you I want all of the clones of Hoya multiflora and I am even starting to like the growth pattern of this Hoya and there is simply no excuse for that. I mean, look at it. What? A fantastic thing about Hoya Multiflora though is that I do think it's truly a Hoya for beginners. It's very, very good for beginners compared to Hoya Carnosa, which you will have to wait for a very long time to get into bloom. As soon as you root this plant, provided that you don't 
underwater it or overwater it, you will be rewarded with flowers. They will push out peduncles, but they may blast the buds if you underwater it or overwater it. And as you can see, um, I this is not the best example because I clearly underwatered this plant. We will get into it. But uh, luckily, I do have two peduncles, so it makes for a nicer flower show. It is very easy to underwater this Hoya, and in that regard, it is unlike your typical Hoyas. It's not like Hoya carnosa or any other Hoya with more succulent leaves. This one will require more water. These leaves are very, very thin. You can see how easy they are to bend. And with this clone, uh, the outer variegated one, they're even thinner. This is, I think, probably the thickness of hibiscus, I would say. This one, slightly thicker. Not, you know, it's not outstanding, but slightly thicker, but they're still both thin-leaved Hoyas. Hoya Lee with a Y, to me, feels about the same like SV406 in the matter of thickness. Now I'm just checking how thick these leaves are. I have to stop but it will require more water. I water my Hoya every five to seven days, sometimes every seven to 10 days, okay, let's admit it. And sometimes maybe there are 14 days in between waterings. I'm not perfect. And that is the reason why this Hoya did blast the buds. That's why we don't have more flowers in this video. And I am sorry, but I am a notorious underwater. I have not yet met a plant that I cannot underwater, except maybe for the plastic plants, but you know what? I might take up that challenge. In all seriousness, it is much better to keep this plant evenly moist. Now, what I think I will do when this plant stops blooming, hopefully soon, I will repot all three of these and Clearly not this one because it has buds now, but I will repot them in self-watering planters. And you know, they do not have drainage and I still managed to underwater it. And this one actually has quite a nice root system. They both have a nice root system, but this one is slightly older and you can see. You can also see how extremely dry that is. I will water you right after the video. The flower, as you can see, is reflexed. And this means that the corolla bends backwards. The tips on SV406, the tips of the corolla are orangey, but on some other clones, they are yellow in color. And that is how this plant earned the name, the shooting star Hoya, because first of all, there are so many of them and they do like shooting stars when you look at them. I think they are quite lovely. And I chose the clone, this particular clone, because of this combination of the colors, or at least I think it's very nice. As I previously mentioned, this one is supposed to have a scent. On Hoya cards, it does say that it smells similar to jasmine, but not as strong. Now, the last time I smelled jasmine was in a tea in 2011, so I don't remember much, but I can Google how jasmine smells like. And actually I did Google, but I just wanted to share with you because I found it quite interesting. I think this reading deserves a different color of the light and let's just slip into a more sensual voice and this is it. The scent of jasmine is incredibly sensual, rich and sweet. More poetically, jasmine could be described as intoxicating, exotic and intense. While it's a floral scent, there is an animalistic element to it, which might also explain why it's long been considered an aphrodisiac. Some lovely sentiments there. Some very beautiful words. Unfortunately, that's all they are. Sentiments and words. What you've just witnessed is a piece of fiction. The reality, I'm sorry to say, is much harsher, far more brutal. I actually did not feel that. I did not feel all of those notes and emotions. Nothing. I did not feel any of those when I smelled it. No. Nope. Let's change the color. I fertilize my Hoya each time I water it. Sometimes it's a bit apart and I use synthetic 
orchid fertilizer. Now, when it comes to propagation, you would just cut the plant with uh, several leaves, and I would choose several leaves. I would not buy cuttings with two leaves. Honestly, this plant is not the best in shipping. They will arrive looking a bit wilty, and they will continue to look wilty until it roots. I did make a mistake with this one. It had more leaves, and I just planted it in this mix of cocoa peat and perlite, and I did not put it into any enclosure, so it did lose quite a few leaves. This one I did put in the enclosure, and while it did look sad for a bit, it did not lose the leaves. They looked sad, but you know, they, they are looking much better now. So if you do want to root this plant yourself, if you buy it unrooted, choose a larger cutting, ask for a larger cutting, pay more for a larger cutting. It will be worth it. I would really go for six leaves or so. Hoya multiflora will only root from the place where you cut it. So if I cut it here, it will not produce aerial roots or roots on the side. They will only come from that bottom part where you cut it. You will typically root this plant in a substrate, in a mix of, well, whatever you use. I use cocoa peat and perlite. I have attempted to root this for a moment in water, but it didn't really look like it was working, so I just decided to go with the more recommended way, which is to root it in substrate. The same goes for Hoya Li with a Y. This Hoya does not like very bright light. It is bright indirect and very indirect light. When it receives too much light, it will not beautifully sun stress like some of the other Hoyas with thicker leaves, with more succulent leaves. Their leaves will turn yellow, chlorotic, they will start to get black spots, and if you find that attractive, great for you, really good for you, but I personally don't. So I try to keep it in very indirect light. My Hoya Multiflora used to live on top of my Hoya shelves that I had in the back, and I still do have them, they're just not as tall because it wasn't as convenient and I hang a lot of the Hoyas as you can see. We are also from a different angle if you didn't notice. Anyways, it was staying on top of that shelf and then there was a 36 watt light that was quite far away from the plant, from the Hoyas or from these smaller ones and it did really well. It bloomed under that light, it grew well under that light. I do intend to move my multifloras on top of this Millsbo cabinet and there is supposed to be a light up there, above them, uh, maybe 50 centimeters above that cabinet. I still have not installed that light or I didn't return it. I took all the lights down to clean them, they were dusty and I just wipe them down with alcohol, so I have to hang all the lights again, which I still didn't do because I am doing this. And while we are on that note, that is a great way to segue into the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Hoya Multiflora. I know that there wasn't as much info as before. There really isn't that much to uncover about Hoya Multiflora, but hey, at least we had an opportunity to spend some time together. And these days, isn't that all that you can hope for? Uh, you should actually probably hope for more. If you're only hoping for that, your standards are pretty low. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And while you are there, you can subscribe to the channel. And if you didn't like the video, well, you can still subscribe to the channel because those two things are not related. You can subscribe whether you like this video or not because there will be and there are other videos that you can watch. That is all. It's a wrap. And I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. I will see you in the next one. And until then, goodbye. Come on, give us more volume. <laughs> Perfect. Perfection. Tell me you feel like a little mermaid without telling me you feel like a little mermaid. It definitely works. Oh, that should be a look. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. One anonymous patron, 
Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Carrie, Danube Daniels, Estelle, Houseplant, Heather, Hoyas and Whatnots, Kelso, Kristen Sherwood, Mars B, Martina, Alif Perday, Melissa Walker, Michael Ferranti, PJ, Rachel Collette Conroy, Robin L. Jennings, Stephanie H2O, Spinach Geek, Tanya TJWO, Vicky Dingler, Vojta Takac, and Zlokob Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons. Angelina Farnan, April Arroyo, Brianna Phillips, Catherine G, Claudia L, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Lori Murphy, Morgan Kennedy, Nikki and Ringlob. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Caroline and Tang, Watanas, Riakul. Thank you all so much for incredible support. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend and I hope you're recharged because tomorrow is Monday. Aren't I great for reminding you of that? I hope you enjoyed seeing my Hoi Multiflora in bloom and I will see you soon.